Today is October 29th, 2022. This is an electrical inspection of a homeowner's house that was purchased in 2008. The homeowner did have a regular person come out and do a regular home inspection. They said that they inspected the box, but I don't know how this box passed any type of inspection. Definitely went past an electrical inspection. That's why you should always have an electrical contract to come out. By the way, this box is off, but you do have voltage coming in because this is the point of first disconnect here. You see, you do have 240 volts, 247 coming in. And I did test it just to make sure you do have 120 going to each leg. One of the things I found out, well, let's kind of start with some of the errors. First of all, just overall looking at the box. The code said it must be done in a workmanship a workmanship like manner. This is not in a workmanship like manner. Nothing is labeled. Everything is jumbled up here together. You have another code violation here where you have multiple uh, grounding and ground wires on the same terminal. You should only have one per terminal unless it's designed for that. That's the, not the way this is designed. But more importantly is the fact that if anyone would have just come up here and to make sure this box is grounded. Now the box must be grounded in case something happens where you have a fault and you don't want to come in you do have enough space here, which is you no know, uh, 36 inches out there in front of and back here. So you do have enough space. But regardless, you don't want to come in and maybe get something from this shelf here. Accidentally touch this. This box is energized. And then you're out here barefooted or something like that. Or you touch this door handle and it goes into the ground. You become a grounding path. Well, if you come in, if you were to look here, you would see that even though this is off, you do have a little bit of, of voltage coming in. You would see that you have... 120 volts. It appears to be grounded for both legs. But the thing is that there's no actual real grounding connection. What they did when they set this box up is that they had the ground, the ground wire that goes outside the, to the grounding electrode come into here, into this point here, if you see it there. But this ground bar is never attached anywhere in here, which means that you're only having this box grounded somewhat by accident, only because it just kind of appears to be touching. That is the only place this is touching. That is not the way the code says to ground the box. You see that clearly you have a place to ground that screw right there, to ground the box right here, but it's not done. So there are so many multiple code violations. You don't know where the neutrals are. They go to each individual one, so you could be actually touching something you don't know. When you come in and you're going to use a white wire, you should actually label the white wire with a black strip or something like that so that you can identify it's a hot wire and not a neutral wire. Because someone who's inexperienced may come in and say, oh, this is neutral, take it out, and then you have a tragedy. Also, what you have here, you do have some tarnishing on this copper line, but it does not indicate anything is burned. You don't see anything coming right out from there. It could be weak in certain points. I'm not sure. We, you have to actually test that with a megometer to see if it's okay. But there are just so many violations in here, and you, you, you have to get... A, an inspection by a qualified person, preferably by a licensed electrician before you buy anything. Once again, this is in 2022. This house has been like this since at the very least 20, 2008 when the homeowner purchased it. They did actually protect the wires coming in, which is a good thing. A lot of times they skimp on that kind of stuff. But once again, this is not in a workmanlike manner. You should be able to simply follow, easily follow every wire that's going to where it should be in there. And also be able to group the neutral along with the hot wire. That's not done. I just urge you to make sure that once again, you get you a homeowner. Excuse me, if you're a homeowner, you get an inspection by a licensed electrician because that's probably going to be the best way to find these things. They do have, <coughs> excuse me, aluminum wiring, <coughs> which is at that time, it probably was okay, but whether it's okay or not, aluminum wire is going to expand and contract more than copper wire. And what you could have is a little bit of arc flash after a while that can lead to something big. Fortunately, they did not double up this aluminum wire. But once again, there are just so many cold violations. Multiple, multiple taps under the same, uh, under the same ground, under the same lug. That's just unacceptable. They should have had a bigger panel. I know it was a 100 amp panel, but still, we should be careful about those kind of things. Also, what you have here, you do have the double breakers. But you have to remember that these phases alternate A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B. So if you're going to have double breakers, make sure that you're not overloading that. For example, if you have two maximum 15 amp pan excuse me, if you have two heaters going to one room here and one room here, then that's essentially 30 amps on this actual phase here, not including what's on this side, which is another 15. That can cause an overload, which is, you know, a little bit more dangerous in my opinion than overcurrent because with overcurrent it's going to shut the breaker off quickly. With an overload it takes a while and you can have other things. That's why I say I don't see any discoloration here, which is good. 
I'm not going to move these just because I don't want to touch anything here. You don't see any discoloration coming out of here, which is good. It means that there's nothing burning up. Uh, you don't see any discoloration here as well on your wires coming out of your breakers. That's good. But this is just very poor workmanship condition. At the very least, he could have moved this grounding wire down so it wouldn't be so close here. You never know what may happen. You also could have made sure that this wire was tucked back a little bit safely. I will touch this to push this back because if it rubs up against that panel, once again, the panel is live. And the fact that this is not truly grounded, only somewhat accidentally grounded, that could be very bad. Please make sure you get a home inspection by a licensed electrician because these things can cause damages that you don't want to run into. Thanks a lot.